Welcome to a special edition, a live edition of the Sunday Supplement. We're here at Wembley Stadium. It's the first trophy of the season, it's up for grabs. It's the Carabao Cup final. It's Arsenal against Manchester City. It's live here on Sky Sports this afternoon from 4.30 p.m. Three special guests with us this morning to talk about that final as well. Martin Samuel, Henry Winter and Sean Custis are with us. You'll also notice we've got the trophy with us as well. It's arrived here at Wembley Stadium, Arsenal and Manchester City. We'll be lifting that a little bit later on. It's been on a tour, a trophy tour, of all the former winners over the past week. Um, let's have a look at some of the papers then. Build up, big build up as well, of course, to this final. Uh, Wenger drawing up his plan to halt the City juggernaut. If he wants any tips, maybe you should speak to Wigan. Brilliant result for them, knocking Manchester City out of the FA Cup earlier on in the week. Uh, Guardiola, he won't back down. Um, he's going to wear that yellow ribbon. Um, the Catalan yellow ribbon. We're going to talk about that a little bit later on in the programme as well. That's the mail on Sunday. Lots of different ideas, lots of different themes this morning in the papers ahead of this final. Pep Guardiola saying Wenger is the special one. His enduring qualities, still the Arsenal manager after all these years, after all this pressure. But can he finally go on to win the League Cup? We'll find out later on. Before all that, of course, it's the special none. Uh, Jose Ch Chelsea, just another game to him, of course. Chelsea visiting Old Trafford this afternoon. Um, lots to talk about as well on the back page of The Sun. We're coming on to Manchester United and Paul Pogba um, in part two of today's programme. No more Pogba. He's moving on if Mourinho stays. And David Hayer, what about this? He's staying at Manchester United if, if they pay him £350,000 a week. Uh, Conte under pressure. Well, this will be a turn up. Louis van Gaal, former Manchester United manager, being lined up to take over from Conte in the short term. That's the Mirror's take on events at Stamford Bridge at the moment. Um, Alan Pardew, time ticking away for him. Yet another defeat, another bad week for him. Uh, Huddersfield beating West Brom 2-1 yesterday at the, uh, at the Hawthorns. Um, Liverpool in great form at the moment. Uh, Klopp leading the City chase. Uh, they're looking good for the runners-up spot in the Premier League. Uh, but let's turn our attentions, though, to the Carabao Cup final. Um, and... Uh, Let's just have a little chat about the team, some of the team news, guys, because Raheem Sterling might not be playing, might not be fit. Um, wasn't on the substitutes bench for the game against Wigan at the start of the week, which, of course, City lost. And, of course, we've got the team selection as well, Martin, whether the managers, respective managers will play their first-choice goalkeepers or whether they'll stick with the keepers that have played throughout this run. What do they do in a game of this magnitude, this importance, considering it's the first trophy of the season in English football? I don't think the goalkeeper's as much of an issue for Wenger as it is for Guardiola, because I don't think there's as much between the goalkeepers at Arsenal as there are the goalkeepers at Manchester City. I think we were talking earlier, and, 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 and Bravo um, is, is a significant step down. Um, and Ospina, I don't think necessarily is. Um, Petr Cech hasn't been in, in the most consistent form lately. I think everyone can see that he's coming towards the end of his career. Um, so uh, I don't think it makes a huge amount of difference, you know, for, for Arsenal. For City, it's it's a massive call. It's a massive call because Bravo hasn't been good. I mean, if he was good enough, he'd be their first choice goalkeeper. They wouldn't have had to go out and buy another goalkeeper last summer. So that, I think, is the more significant of the two judgment calls. Yeah. Well, why do they? Why do they stick with the goalkeepers, or why do they stick with the teams and the themes, Henry, throughout, that they've used throughout the tournament? Why don't a stage like this, the National Stadium, Wembley Stadium, and the first trophy, silverware at stake? Why don't they put their marker down? Well, I guess it's squad rotation, keeping the fringe players happy. I totally agree with with Martin. I think it's it's crazy what uh, what Guardiola. I mean, you have to admire his sort of loyalty to uh, to, to to Bravo, but they are completely. It's not simply his shot stopping ability and ever since you know we've seen that how how good he is, but it's his distribution, which is the reason that he was brought in because Bravo was was getting caught out and it effectively finished Joe Hart's career at Manchester City. But with this, with Edison in goal, I mean, his his ability to he spreads confidence along the, the the back four. They can push higher up. He can play these balls. I mean, he's you know he'd, he'd be an outfield player easily as as he, as he was for part of his teenage years. So they'll definitely miss him. So they'll miss him tactically as well as his uh, goalkeeping abilities. I get, I get all that, but you've got to keep your reserve team goalkeeper. Give them a reason to almost exist in the squad. When we were lads. Reserve team football was pretty competitive. It was a good, a, a good level. You'd get the battles with some good old gnarls centre forwards. You'd keep yourself interested that way. Now, if they don't play in the cups, 
where do they play? What, how do they get any sort of match action? And just say Edison was to get injured towards the end of the season, Bravo's got to hit the ground running. I accept he hasn't had a great time at City. But there has to be an incentive for the backup goalkeeper. Ospina's been talking very well this week about how much he's still enjoying at Arsenal because he's getting those games in the Cups. And you have to do the same for Bravo. I accept everything the lad says. It would be better if Edison played. But you have to give Bravo an incentive. Mm. OK, well, the incentive, of course, is to win uh, silver this afternoon at Wembley, guys. What, in terms of importance, the attachment to, for both managers, for Wenger, who hasn't lifted the, the um, League Cup in his career, and been hugely successful in the Premier League, of course, and the FA Cup, um, but also Guardiola still waiting for his first trophy as the Manchester City manager. Who does this mean more to this afternoon, can we say? Uh, well, no, I, I wouldn't separate it. I, I don't. I think every trophy means something. I think to, to Wenger, um, if they're not going to be in the mix um, for the Premier League, which they're not really, um, and they haven't been all season, mm. they're not in the Champions League. The Euro Europa League is there. It's a lot harder to win this season than it was um, last season. I think in, if you look at the teams left, um, so. He's got a couple of domestic trophies that he can go for. He's been knocked out of one already. This is big. This is, you know, this could be it for Arsenal season. So it's very important for Wenger. At the same time, even though Manchester have got so much to, so much more to shoot at, and I don't think that the League Cup is ever going to keep a guy in a job or, or, or whatever. You still want. To, he needs to get on the board. It would be good to get on the board early. Um, Pellegrino. Um, in his first season, didn't he? he did the he did the he did the League Cup and 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 the Pellegrini. League yeah. Pellegrini, sorry, yeah. but Southampton guy, Pellegrini. Um, Pellegrini. So You're it's drinking important. too much water this morning. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. It's far too <laughs> far too early in the morning for me. This, by the way. The um, but um, the yeah. So he he got he, he got on the board um, with the League Cup. There's nothing wrong with that. I understand that, but it means it means more to Wenger, because in terms of this place has been Wenger's sanctuary in the last few years. I mean, you look at Özil's tweets yesterday. He said, "We're going back to Wembley, our second home." You know, he's got a fantastic. Wenger's got a very good record here in cup finals in recent years, away from the Emirates and all the sort of incipient toxic atmosphere over his regime. All the question marks about this new structure being put in place by Gazidis behind the scenes, the catalyst for change. The, I mean, they've made some very good appointments behind the scene. Is, is this marginalising Wenger? If Wenger comes out today and wins and is standing on the, the pitch with, OK, it's, it's the fourth of the trophies, but it's still a trophy that the fans will be having another great day out at Wembley. That is absolutely huge for Wenger yeah. in the tail end of this drifting career of his time at Arsenal. I love some of the Arsenal fans' dilemma, though. There's a, there's a section of them. <laughs> I've got a mate at work who's saying, uh, I'm saying, do you, I actually said to him, do you want to win this this weekend? Because he's a fierce Wenger critic. Mm. So he's saying, yeah, I think I want to win it, but it's going to let Wenger off the hook, isn't it? So if Wenger wins the League Cup, they all think, well, that gives him another another year. I'm not saying he was ever going to get the sack at the end of this season, even if he doesn't win it. But it's almost that's given him another stay of execution like the FA Cup did last season. And for a certain section of Arsenal fans, there's a slight thought, well, if we didn't win this and we ended up potless, it might hasten his exit. But, they were, but Sean, mm. they, they won the FA Cup last season. If, mm. they, if they were to win... Um, the Carabao Cup this afternoon. As an Arsenal supporter, are we, who's devaluing these competitions? Is it the media or is it the supporters? I think the support. Because I, in the past we'd say that's a that's that's, that's a, a pretty good show. Yes, I know, that's, but a, we're, that's a decent year. We're a bit older. I think the youngsters of today don't see it as as significant mm -hmm. as perhaps we used to see it. I mean, we we did a special feature on Luton this week with Mick Harford with the trophy. People still talking about it 30 years later. I can remember what a fantastic mm -hmm. achievement that was for Luton back in the late 80s. And that really, really, really mattered. But it doesn't feel quite the same as mm. it did then. Well, what about the build-up to this game for both clubs? Why did Manchester City, how did they manage to lose to Wigan in an FA Cup tie? Because it happens, and this is my point, you see. They've been knocked out of the FA Cup. You can't guarantee that Manchester City are going to win the Champions League. They look good, but you can't guarantee it. Say they lose today and we go, oh, it doesn't matter, you know. But it does, actually, because what Guardiola is meant to be building there is this, is this, is this team, is this dynasty that, that are serial winners. 
So they're not meant to get knocked out of the FA Cup by Wigan, but we accept it happens, but it's not meant to happen. They're not meant to lose a final to Arsenal. Um, so I, 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 I slightly disagree with, with Henry that it doesn't make any difference for them. I do think it, it, it does, because in the end, if he ends up this season, they were going for four trophies, and everyone was saying, oh, this could be the quadruple, this could be this, this could be that. And it, if it ends up as he's won the league, or well, Mancini won the league, um, that fellow whose name I couldn't... Yeah, uh, you uh, made I got one earlier, he won the league. Um, do you know what I mean? Manchester yeah. City managers are winning the do, league do you now. You know, it's, it's, it's not the stellar achievement for which you, no. you get Guardiola in to do more Agreed. than just win Agreed. the league. The team has to win Premier League and something else, I think. That's, that's yeah, where we are right now. Just winning the Premier Beyond League. Did we decide the Chelsea season, in the same season? Did we decide last season Chelsea were a great team? No. No, we, we didn't. I think, it, to be really considered great, you've got to win too. I think you have to win the Premier League and something else. But beside, beside the, the, the reason I disagree with you, and I very rarely do, Martin, is I just think the way that Manchester City are playing in this league, it is, it is totally fantastic accept football. That. Totally accept it is, you know, totally We talk about that. Chelsea with a great mm. champions last season. It mm. was fantastic, the reaction, Conte, that the change mm. post-Arsenal was, was brilliant. But this Manchester City team, you know, look, it's not the greatest team of all time. It's not even the greatest in the Premier League era. And I know we're all obsessed with the Premier League era. But they do play football from another planet at times. Mm. I mean, if, you, if you're going to form or vote, you know, when the players vote for the PFA team of the year, they'll probably have three of the of the front six. You know, De Bruyne and, and all these players have just been fantastic this season. So in terms of the... Un OK, it's only a trophy, but it's a much bigger trophy than that. And they will... They're progressing oh, in the Champions League as well. Guardiola does have a track record in the Champions League. You can see the direction of travel with Manchester City is absolutely fantastic you, and it's the quality of the football as well as the fact that trophies are coming. But do you not also think that Manchester City are still new enough that their fans want to win every final they get mm. to? They're, 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 not, yeah. they're not sort of jaded by it, you know, it's not one of those things where you get to Wembley and people are going, oh well, you know, it's the community shield, I can't be bothered or whatever. It's it's still Manchester City, it's all still no. They don't want to come here and get beat by Arsenal, who they know they're a better team. But, the side, but this doesn't undermine Guardiola if he doesn't win this today, because he is pushing no. on in the Champions League, we've seen the recent away performances. He's pushing on clearly with this unbelievable football mm. in, in the uh, in the Premier League. But it's you don't think it'll undermine two trophies, there'll be two trophies down in a week if they lost today. Yeah. But All ifs and buts, but won't I'll tell you what, I mean, our media's mad at the time, but if we're going to start doing Pep under pressure pieces tomorrow morning, no, just because he's not saying no, 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 I think I was so sure, but I don't think I will. You were having a fight with Martin, I was enjoying that for a change instead of fighting with me. But I'll come on to that. I think we have looked at City this week and just thought, Maybe if you get into them, maybe if you rattle them a bit. They've had this complaint about the bad tackles, and there have been some seriously bad tackles against them. But Guardiola saw fit to, they saw fit to write to the, um, the Referees Association. They warned an issue about it. They don't like, clearly, being rattled. I mean, leg-breaking tackles, look, that's right, again, we can't... Uh, but if you get into them, if, you get, if Arsenal had a sort of enforcer type who gave them a bit of a rattle, we might be sitting here thinking, well, if he gets into them a bit, Maybe it'll make a difference. So City sometimes would like to be allowed just to play football the way they want to. And I think Wigan proved that if you rattle them a little bit, mm -hmm. another team's so will be looking at it. That was slightly self-inflicted because of yes, that, yes, it was. Types of what, yes, what, it was. what did you think of uh, Guardiola's reaction? Half-time with Paul Cook? I thought, um, it was ridiculous. Time, I thought he should be bigger, it's mm. like you wrote in the week. I thought he should be bigger than that. I think he should be above that. And I think he should still have been standing there believing that City would come back. But because of his reaction, he, he got completely rattled and I think lost his focus, which is not the Guardiola we're, we're used to seeing. But, sorry, I'm so surprised that people are surprised. I mean, anyone who's read all the books about him or has been following his career, he's incredibly intense on, ma intense on match days. Mm. So that, I, I completely agree on this. I think it's ridiculous that he's being done for the Yellow Ribbon. I think there's far more of a legitimate case for the FA to have actually said, said listen, calm down with your behaviour in, uh, in, 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 in the tunnel. So uh, he's a very intense individual. I mean, you know, the fact that he doesn't eat on match days, so, so, so come the evening, he's, he's completely wired. And the only mm. food he's going to have during the day is... Uh, a place of fish at sort of midnight or whatever. I mean, you know, no wonder he's sort of on edge. He li and you can see why players want to play for him because of that passion, that intensity that he sort of that, that emanates from him. But he should. But he is he is on the edge during games. Yes, but he should have been. They all thinking, are, though, aren't they? Hang on, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm Guardiola. We're City. Yes, we're a man down, but we can deal with this, and I don't need to get rattled by 
this little club from down the road, if you like. I should be, I, we should all be above that and be able to sort it out. And they got completely distracted by the whole thing. Goalkeeper mistake. Pardon, well, it was a great finish by Will Griggs and whatever, but got to yeah. look at the goalkeeper as well. It would, we'll come on to Arsenal and Ossesons a little bit later on before we talk about, about the game. Um, but the yellow ribbon, Martin, and, mm -hmm. and Guardiola's stance. Yes. I can tell by... Just, <laughs> if you could just explain your, your re reaction. Um, well, the, my reaction has always been the same thing. You cannot decide, once you start... Well, the FA have, have, have driven this... Like the poppy related issue. Exactly. Like, mm -hmm. for, for years, you know, we must be out to wear mm -hmm. poppies. We must always wear poppies. Which you agree with? Which what well, I agree with. Well, wearing poppies. Well, wearing poppies. I agree. I, I agree with people wearing poppies. Mm -hmm. I don't agree with with, with yeah, sports I'm people with you, wearing right. poppies. Poppies have nothing to do with football. Yeah. Absolutely nothing to do with football. If the crowd want to wear poppies, great. But the players. If you go to a gym on Remembrance Sunday, no one isn't, isn't on a cross trainer with a poppy on there because it's an athletic yeah. activity and the poppy is not actually part of that. You, you put your poppy on in the, in the changing room afterwards and go out into the street. Now... You've obviously been to a gym on Remembrance I've, I've been, I've been <laughs> to a gym on Remembrance Sunday, I have, and I was looking around and I actually wrote about it. I'm looking and thinking, well, there you go. Is no, this a Daily Mail thing? They send all their reporters no, no, out no, to no, check no, on no. This is, this is a Charlie Sale would be very upset a, with you. Oh, Charlie would be very upset with this, but this is a very personal thing. I've always thought it. So, <laughs> all, it, so, any sort of statement that's nothing to do with football, what, what were we fighting that for? So now we've got that. Well, now you've opened the gates because there's, there, you know, Pep Guardiola is making his his statement. He is making his. Um, it's not an act of remembrance because the guys aren't actually his, dead, his, but his, his democratic his, statement. His yeah. democratic statement. And you think, well, we can't have it always. You can't, you, you, you can't have it. You know, oh, it's okay when it's us because otherwise we're back to the what we were talking about the Winter Olympics, where you know the only people who can be disqualified are the ones who aren't British. Um, <laughs> Is that right? And, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's, I think that's, that's, been, that's, that's, been that's, that's the law the BBC have been pushing for for about three weeks. Um, <laughs> I forgot he doesn't follow the British. <laughs> no, 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 no. But, but, you know, and I just think that we've pushed for this. We are the ones who have pushed for, for being able to pin stuff on your shirt. And, and well, now someone's pinned something on your shirt. And now we're, oh, no, you can't do that. I mean, who, 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 who are we to judge? What you can pin on your shirt, and you also haven't complained. I mean, you're no, far more off he, on this issue. He can, wear, he can wear that in the Champions League, yeah. and there's no yeah. problem at all. Right. Um, I think Martin's quite right. I've always had, had a problem with football relating itself to even military conflict and all that. I, when soldiers come down on zip wires here to deliver the ball at the FA Cup final yeah. and things like that, why, I think, why do we have to relate football to the to the military? And then people wonder why fans chant "No surrender to the IRA" when they're when they're at away games. Absolutely. It's because we relate football a, a lot to military things, and as Martin says quite rightly, we want our own statement. And UEFA and FIFA are going, "Well, hang on, how can you do that?" And they, they gave in in the end, but I think we'd be better off staying out of it. Martin, I'm sorry, I, I, sorry, Martin, sure. I don't think you can begrudge the members of the armed forces their opportunity to come here. We, we've seen it with all the sort of the, the, the tickets for heroes. They're, they're often four or five hundred um, ex service men and women who are here. I think that the public enjoy that opportunity to say thanks to, to, to the armed forces. The Football Association and also the, the Football League have a long history with, uh, w w with the armed forces going back to, well, to the Victorian age in, in, the, Victor in the FA's case. Um, so I don't think you can put you strikes the members of the tickets. armed forces I don't think that's here. A problem. I, I don't see the problem with that. I just think we sometimes become too closely related. The, the two come too if closely related. If you go to related. America when you watch American sports and you see how militarist everything oh, is around yeah. American sports, yeah. and you look at it thinking, this, this, this is actually what you know baseball is meant to be about. Um, Sorry, but sorry, the national sport can have a pride in the national armed forces. Yeah, yes, and there is a connection be. there yeah, between the between the supporters. Be. It's very and interesting the... that it doesn't happen in the Premier League, though. Mm. No, that's because the Premier League is a global ah, organisation. All right, guys, so we'll um, we'll leave it there. Uh, of course, we'll continue our build-up to the Carabao Cup final against Arsenal against Manchester City later on this afternoon. Before that, though, it's Manchester United against Chelsea. More on that next. Do you need some extra time, mate? Selco, sponsoring Sky Sports Sunday Supplement. At WeBuyAnyCar.com, we strive to make selling your car as quick as Philip Schofield. Look at him go.
WeBuyAnyCar.com might not be as quick as Phil, but you could sell your car within an hour of getting a quote. Wow, so fast. Where's he off to? Enter your register number now at WeBuyAnyCar.com. Supercharge your home insurance with 10% off AXA, exclusively at Money Supermarket. Let's talk breakdown cover. Now there's some stuff you should know. Unlike the AA, we won't charge you extra if you need specialist lifting equipment to get you out of here, there, or this. Yep, they're extras. At Green Flag, we've put an end to all that. With our smart network, you get award-winning breakdown cover that covers you when you break down. We'll even half your AA or RAC renewal quote. Green Flag, common sense to the rescue. To find the truth, you wouldn't listen to just one voice. You wouldn't believe just one story. You wouldn't trust just one opinion. And neither would we. The Week reviews all the issues of our day and where everyone stands on them. Sign up online and try it for free for six weeks. Because you shouldn't make up your mind on just one issue. Spotto Cash is a fun-based game of Spot the Ball with a weekly £10,000 guaranteed winner. If your spot is closest to the judge's position, you win the weekly guaranteed cash prize of £10,000. Play now for your chance to join our previous winners. Spot the Ball, Spot the Cash. Enjoy a smooth start to your day with Cornerstone, the perfect shade delivered to your door. Start today at cornerstone.co.uk. Play at one of Marriott's incredible venues across the UK and experience luxurious accommodation and championship golf. Offers include one night and two rounds from just £99 per person. Plus, one in 12 stay and play for free. Book now and receive a free Callaway XR driver. Golfbreaks.com. Saving golfers time and money. There's a new way to drive. With a car that parks itself. Uses a single pedal for acceleration and deceleration. Senses and adapts to the surrounding traffic with a car that's filled with innovation and nothing but innovation. The new Nissan Leaf, simply amazing. First of all, I didn't plan for this to happen. I love you, I love you both so, so much. much. I love you, I love you too. It just sort of happened. Fortunately, you can't control everything. Greetings from Sunny Dubrovnik. Brand new comedy, Bliss, continues Wednesdays at 10 on Sky One. And if you've missed the start of this complicated love triangle, then you're in luck. Episodes one and two are available now on Catch Up TV. Need an early retirement, mate? Selco, sponsoring Sky Sports Sunday Supplement. Welcome back to Wembley Stadium, special edition of the Sunday Sup from uh, live from Wembley Stadium this morning. It's the first trophy of the season up for grabs. It's the Carabao Cup final. It's Arsenal against Manchester City. You can watch that. It's live from 4.30 here at Wembley Stadium. Martin Henry and Sean are still with us. They've been debating furiously about the poppies over the break. But, uh, <laughs> we'll come back to that in what, November? November yeah. time, will we? Yeah. Um, OK, um, let's just uh, remind you, uh, we want to talk about Manchester United and Chelsea. They face each other uh, before the Carabao Cup final this afternoon. Uh, unlike the Sun to underplay something, Manchester United crisis is billed as on the back page this morning. Uh, no more. This is Paul Pogba on his way out if Mourinho stays as uh, Manchester United manager, Sean. Um, and um. one man who wants a lot more is, uh, is David Dyer, wants £350,000 a week. Shall we start 
with, with Pogba. Is right. that is that for you the biggest story of the week? Because we've seen over the last few weeks, um, Conte and, and Antonio Conte and Mourinho winding each other up ahead of this game. But on Friday, they they tried to call mm. some. They clearly tried to call some sort of truce. Is Pogba and his future and his position in that Manchester United team the biggest story of the weekend or the biggest story of this game? I think it's a very very big issue and. His, his issues with Pogba are clearly around tactical and Pogba wants to play a certain way, Mourinho wants to play another way. At the moment, though, I think Mourinho's in the ascendancy just because Pogba's slightly isolated. He's the only one at the moment having fights with Mourinho. If you look at the Real Madrid time, you've got a few players starting to gang up on Mourinho and eventually, and maybe even at Chelsea to a certain extent, and eventually he loses through almost weight of numbers or the weight of personalities against him. I'm not sure Pogba is strong enough to take mm. Mourinho on, actually. But why? It, it, it is always painted as one of them's got to go. Why can somebody at Man United, even Sir Bobby Charlton, <laughs> not sit down and go, listen, we spent a fortune on you, we've spent a fortune on you, you two are the future of this club, now get it sorted out. Edward Wood, that's his it's job, it, well, it? maybe, Well, maybe it is his job, I'm not sure if he's got the personality to sort out, but I don't think that's unreasonable to expect them to sort this problem out. If you've invested all that money in a player like Paul Pogba, you're looking at him for the long term. Even if we think Mourinho only stays three years at a, as a club, you still, you still believed that he would be the man to take Man United further. You can't let a spat like this cause Man United to implode again. But I under, if, if Mourinho is saying to Pogba, look, this is what I want you to do, then I'm afraid Pogba's got to do it, even if he doesn't like it. Well, first, Henry, I think, what, just, can I just, 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 just go back to Sevilla, Henry? I just want to clear this yeah, up as well in yeah. your view. Yeah. Why didn't Mourinho start him in that game? OK, I know he brought him on after 17 minutes. He was forced to, forced to make the change. In your view, why didn't he start him? I think possibly he was looking tactically at the balance. Tomine's been playing well. Herrera, maybe he wanted that energy around. Maybe he was sending a, a slight message to uh, Pogba. I think the issue at, at Carrington and Manchester United generally is more around Mina Reola, um, Pogba's agent, than Pogba itself. I mean, the people you talk to at, at Manchester United, you know, they like Pogba. I know we're, we're obsessed with his haircut and the emojis and all that, but actually, when you strip all that away, that's a fantastic footballer, athlete, technician. So, you know, he is a Manchester United player in terms of not simply through his upbringing, but I think in terms of his authority, his swagger, that's what the Manchester United fans want. So, you know, it's lovely and it makes great headlines that there is this perceived schism. I think the issue is more with, with the agent, maybe stamping his feet a little bit. I think Mourinho, by all accounts, is, sounds actually in quite a good place. I think it's just now down to Pogba to, to fit in. I think they, the imbalance more, everyone's focusing on Pogba, the, the imbalance more is partly because Sanchez has come in. Mm. So Martial, who's a fan's favourite, has been terrific, coming in off the, uh, the left, he's not playing. I don't understand why Sanchez just isn't, isn't given a run in the middle. I know he's done most of his effective work for Chile and Arsenal, so slightly cutting in. But just play him closer to Lukaku, and then you're not getting, if you are playing effectively this 4-3-3 or whatever formation you want to call it, um, with, um, with Pogba on the, on the left. He's not running into traffic with Sanchez, which seems to be a sort of tactical conundrum that Mourinho, I'm sure, will work out. I think if he shifts Sanchez inside, gives Pogba this, uh, this opportunity to, uh, to, to, to storm forward, maybe play the two holding midfielders, uh, he might have to sacrifice a matter or whoever. But I just think that you look at Manchester United, Manchester United, the swagger has come back under Mourinho. Everyone says, well, it's back to Van Gaal and Moyes. It is not. There's been a huge rebuilding job that Mourinho's had to do. And he's going to have to do more in the summer. There's a lot of dead wood in that squad that needs ridding. But actually, if you look, they've got seven or eight absolutely outstanding players there. De Gea, whatever De Gea wants, I know that's a dangerous thing to say in the modern game, but we are in a post-Neymar world. De Gea saves them. You know, we were there in midweek. De Gea, you could have written your match report easily on De Gea, how important he was with that one save before half or two of the saves before half time. So he is fantastic. But the, the encouraging thing is, is that De Gea wants to stay as long as Manchester United pay him. For me, he's the most important player, so you pay him what he, uh, what, what he wants and deserves. But the Pogba conundrum, I think, can be sorted out. I know we love to strip everything down to head-to-head -head feuds, personalities. I think that's just a tactical tweak in there and keeping uh, you know, Real a bit quieter. Martin, why has he been allowed to escalate, though? Because I think it was here, wasn't it, the Tottenham game, mm -hmm. uh, when Mourinho pulled him over after the goal, yeah. had a talk, they, they mm -hmm. clearly clashed 
very it was it was yeah it was obvious that they were clashing mm, mm. Um, it was a very public clash and since then it's been allowed to escalate but why has Mourinho allowed that to happen I don't think it's a case of him allowing it to happen it's it's just a case of he needs the player to play a certain way and if the player is not playing that certain way then he's got to take action it's very important that Mourinho fixes this this is not Kevin De Bruyne, this is not Mohamed Salah at Chelsea who were players on the fringes of the team and people say, oh, but he made a huge mistake, you know, selling them and they are such great players. When when he sold them, people weren't saying that. Nobody thought that Kevin De Bruyne was going to come back as one of the greatest midfield players in Europe. Nobody thought that Mohamed Salah was going to return to the Premier League as a striker that was going to end up with 40 goals this season. Uh, as a forward who's going to end up with 40 goals this season. So th it's not the same. This guy came as the linchpin of a Juventus team that is absolutely has been dominating uh, Italian football. Has won the league in, 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 I think it's six years in succession now, more than any other team. This one shouldn't have been hard to make work. He needs to make this one work. This is not, you know, he's already lost, he's already, McCaterian's come in, hasn't fitted, he's gone. The interesting thing about the agent, if you look at who the agent has got at, mm. at, at Manchester United, he's not really got too many players that are properly firing yet. I mean, Lukaku started off great guns and then started playing some better teams and, 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 the, and the goals dried up. McCaterian's already gone. Um, Ibrahimovic. Uh, Ibrahimovic, who's, who's, who's now injured. I mean, he, he, he was tremendous for him in that in that season, but it, it's over. But who knows? Yeah. Uh, um, and, and and now Pogba, where it, 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 it's been far more difficult than it should have been. Really, Pogba's a, a super player, um, and he should be able to fit in to the shape that Mourinho wants now. And I, I think the comparison. Going back a few years now, yeah. Paul Ince and Terry Venables in, in 1996. Venables wanted Paul Ince to play in a certain way. Ince thought he was much more of a marauding midfielder. Venables wanted him more disciplined. Ince spent about a year out of the England team with a, with a, with a, with a succession of bizarre excuses to do with I'm giving him time to adapt to Italy and, and things like that. It just made no sense whatsoever. But it was all to do with getting him to knuckle down. Now you you, you need to do the job that. Mm. I want you to do and I think that's what's been happening with Pogba he needs him to do the job he wants mm. him to do and if you've got to spend a few weeks out of the team and think about your options mate that's what you've got to do okay let's move on to the to the managers and Mourinho and his relationship Sean with with Chelsea supporters because I actually find it I find it a little bit sad that given his history um, in two separate spells, yeah. having won the Premier League title in both the opening seasons that he was with Chelsea, two successive titles um, when he arrived from Porto in 2004, so we're looking at 05 and 06, um, and the teams that he built, Chelsea. I just find it, I don't know if you do, but I find it a little bit sad I do. that this relationship, it was strained and now it seems non-existent. But I, I do believe there's a hardcore 25% of Chelsea fans who will stay loyal to Mourinho. They still love him, they still thank him for everything they did. I think it's probably three quarters of them who've turned now and want to give him a lot of jip. But for but he's, some of them, he, he'll, but the other thing is, Sean, he seems happy yeah, that the relationship is, is over. He, he seems happy to cut But the I wrist equally, there. like a few Chelsea fans, I equally, when he came back the second time, I didn't truly believe he was coming back because he wanted to go to Chelsea. He said, Chelsea's in my heart. But actually, he really wanted to go to Man United at that point. I think a lot of people saw through that maybe there's a little bit of legacy of that that they always thought really he wanted to go to Manchester United but what he achieved at Chelsea I mean the fun we had with it and the fun the fans had and the enjoyment it, he should be forever in handles but I'm I'm with you I don't quite understand why he is so bitter about it maybe it's to do with the board but you know, he had a great relationship Friday, with the He supporters. said, they're my friends, they've given him two big hugs. He had a great, yeah, they have. He had a great relationship with the supporters. They loved him for it. Maybe it becomes so intense that when it turns, it completely falls apart. It wasn't, if you like, neutral enough, maybe. But Mourinho ne needs that, doesn't he? He always needs to pick a few fights. He always needs to have a few people who are just sort of stirring his adrenaline, whether it's the sort of medical staff, whether it's one or two uh, players. I, I, I agree with you. I think there should be sort of more respect on both sides. But fans are tribal. Fans, will, you know, they will, as they have done, you know, they've been totally loyal to, to, to Conti and, and rightly so, and they'll sing his name again today. Um, but they're always going to turn against someone who's left them. 
Yeah, but if you if you ever see him in a sort of away from the the say the match day, and he meets a Chelsea fan, say outside of the, the bubble, if you like, mm. the rapport it's fine. It's a bit like when everybody gives you a load of stick on Twitter, I'm hostage to fortune, and then, and then you actually meet them in the street and they're up. Perfect, perfectly all right, but they're prepared to give you a load of stick on social media. Don't you get the stick on I, the street as well, actually? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I finally get it. <laughs> but it, he is perfectly charming with Chelsea fans, and they love to see him, and they like to have an autograph with him, and they like to have a picture with him. Yeah. So it's maybe a bit for the, a bit of a one for the cameras, this, if you like, mm. this, this mutual dislike. It also makes him closer to the Manchester United yeah. fans. That's what yeah. um, and he needs You them. know, Mourinho is he, 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 he's very much you know about building relationships with the with the with the fans. Sometimes he's always demanding more of the fans. I want you to get behind yeah. the team more. Why is this place so quiet? So if he left any doubt where his allegiances are when Chelsea mm. play Manchester United he hasn't got a leg to stand on when he's saying to the fans, I want you a lot more noisy and I want you this and I want you this is, do you not think, is, is his way of showing the supporters, the showing the club, this is where I am, this is what I care about, I don't care about that anymore, you lot think I care about it, I, I don't care about it, I'm with you. And, you know, because he, he did it, he picked fights. It's not just this Conte thing, which is, is, is him with another manager, which he, which he sort of is, revels in, really. But from the very start, he, he began a distancing process. The first time he was up against Chelsea, he found a way of, of saying something that sort of distanced himself from Chelsea. Can't remember what it was, but it what might have been about um, the fans or it might have been about the club or whatever. But he has been gradually trying to distance himself from Chelsea. I'm not sure that's actually the same mm. as the as the spat with Conte, because mm. I think that yeah. that that is a put more more of a person. He, he does thing. hold up the three fingers to make the point to Chelsea mm. fans. Mm. That, so he is still engaged yeah. with them yeah. in terms yeah. of yeah. actually, guys. Yeah. I won three trophies yeah, in three leagues. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. So yeah. you still haven't had anyone who's won three. Yeah. So yeah. it's. It, I think that might have been what he did the first time. I don't he think he's say, completely moved on. No, <laughs> no. But at the same time, it's a little bit of a wind up. Mm. It's a, it's mm. a little yeah. bit of a. Yeah. Okay, the two managers they've called some sort of truce before this game, um, but I want to talk a little bit about Chelsea's form going into it as well because they played Barcelona at Stamford Bridge on Tuesday night. Mm -hmm. Sean, what, what was your view on the on Chelsea's approach to the game because they sat back and they encouraged Barcelona to have the ball, and they wanted to get away without them hurting without Barcelona That's hurting right. them, but they eventually did, of course, when Messi scored his equaliser. What, what, but what were your thoughts Play on the way that Chelsea set up to play that game? Played it brilliantly. It was why. It we almost understood now why Chelsea wanted Conte and how good he was. Not the and answer I was a, looking for. A, why? Well, I, I, because I, I would go back to the Chelsea, the team, the, the, the Chelsea, the Champions League winning side, that, that wasn't afraid of anybody, and certainly not at home at Stamford Bridge. I didn't on their think. Own I patch. didn't think they played like they were afraid. when when and surrendered and so surrendered, this team, this and surrendered the ball. This team isn't as good. He knows this team isn't as good. But he, I thought he played them magnificently. I know Messi scored a goal, but they dealt with them very, very well mm. up until that point. And it's, let's be honest, it's only a mistake that's undone them. And they've hit the post. They've hit the post twice, Neil. I mean, they, they could have. I know it's good of mm -hmm. and should have, but they could be going with a with a decent advantage. I thought he played it really, really well. Do you remember um, a few years ago when Scotland played without a centre forward? Yes. And yeah. Yeah. False nine. There was, was that the yeah. outrage. Yeah. Craig Craig Bain, did it. Yeah. There was outrage. It was a, a, a qualifier. How can you not play with a centre forward? And yeah. since then, a number of teams have done it and realised it works. I think Hazard gets a bit frustrated by it. I don't think he. I don't mm. think he loves it. But it is an effective tactic against very good, very good sides. I think he played it well. In fact, for this season, you looked at Chelsea then. You thought, you know what? It is possible they could do something in the Champions League playing like that. You clearly don't think they can, but it is possible. We were in 20, was it 2012 when they went away to Barcelona and rattled them. So there is a little thing at Barcelona about Chelsea. There is a, a, a respect, don't an apprehension play about playing them. I don't think Barcelona will be taking it for granted in the second leg. They haven't beaten them it. since 2006 in any no. game. haven't beaten them in any game since 2006. Um, and... You know, I mean, most of those are draws. That's six, I think it's six yeah. draws and, and two Chelsea wins. Um, and not all of those draws have been good draws, because some of them have been draws where Chelsea have gone out. But at the same time, there's not too many teams that will play Barcelona eight times 
um, <laughs> and, 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 mm. and not lose. Mm. And there's not too many teams that have kept Lionel Messi quiet for mm. 12 years either. Mm. Um, they so, didn't play him every day. No, I know, but they still play him eight times. That's, yeah. that's, 730 that's, minutes without a goal against them. Plenty, plenty of time. I thought, it was a, I thought it was a good performance. I didn't even think it was a particularly defensive performance no. because the, although the possession, possession statistics are massive, well, they're always going to be massive with Barcelona, same as they are with Manchester City. That's what they do. That's, that's their tactic. Mm -hmm. you're, you, you're never going to have more of the ball because they're, they're, the whole way they play is about having the ball, having the ball, having the ball. I thought I thought they did as, as well against Barcelona. Bearing in mind that most Chelsea fans she spoke to outside Stamford Bridge on Tuesday night mm. thought they were going to get beat about three nil, yeah. and 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 fifteen minutes to go they're winning one nil. If you agree with these two, that's why I'm sitting here on the wing, isolated. <laughs> well, you go for it. Then. Why, why, the why, you, why are we not you, impressed by the performance? Because I they, really because I just thought Stamford Bridge that they that they surrendered the ball. I thought Chelsea are a team with European pedigree, God, a team that's won the Champions please. League. I know I am. So this is Chelsea. This yeah. We talked about Peter Kenyon all those years ago. Oh, we're to be a big club, we've got to win two European Cups. So if Chelsea are a big club... They're still club, in it, Neil. They're not out of it. They're not out of it, yeah. But who, who's got the advantage having drawn one all at Stamford Bridge? Barcelona. The advantage yeah. is with Barcelona. Through, through, through one mistake. But I mean, I'll agree with the guys. The, the, the two most impressive players on the pitch for Chelsea, William, an attacking player, hit two poses. Yep. The most impressive uh, Barcelona player was probably their holding midfielder, mm. Sergio Busquets. Mm. Okay, look forward to Chelsea taking their place in the Champions League quarter final. No, we're not saying that. <laughs> no, 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 this is good, isn't it? And get you a pack of dawn, you can't even get a cup of coffee, <sighs> proper cup of coffee. What do you want? What do you want? <laughs> we'll get you a, re we'll get you a refill, what do you want? <laughs> Would you like tea? A cup of tea for you? Are you okay? Sure. I'm fine, thank you. Yeah, I'm sorted. Get this man sorted. Another Pellegrino. Okay, next up we're going to talk about Liverpool and also his time off for West Brom. It's Alan Pardew. More on that next.
Welcome back to Wembley Stadium, special edition of the Sunday Supplement. The good news, Spider Cam, it's working. It's taking us all the way up to one of the goals that we're here at Wembley Stadium. I was worried about that, yeah, I was worried about the Spider Be more worried about VAR, yeah, a bit VAR, later on. Yeah, that's the one yeah, that we wanted to make yeah. sure it's uh, working. Yeah. Um, just in case you didn't realise, Martin's with us this morning. Um, Henry Winters <laughs> here, and uh, so is Sean Custis, uh, so is the Carabao Cup as well. Uh, just to remind you uh, what's in the papers then this morning, uh, Wenger's the special one ahead of this Carabao Cup final, Arsenal against Manchester City, Pep hailing the outstanding achievements of Arsene Wenger's longevity in English football over the years. Uh, Wenger drawing up his plan with Sam Dean here in the Sunday Telegraph, Wenger drawing up a plan to halt City's juggernaut. Both of them had pretty humiliating, embarrassing defeats in the week. City knocked out of the FA Cup by Wigan. Uh, Arsenal losing to Ostersons on uh, Thursday night in the Europa League. Um, Pep won't be beaten, um, but um, his, the political undertone continues this afternoon at Wembley. He is going to wear that yellow ribbon. He has been charged by the FA. We've talked about that already in part one of today's um, programme. Um, Martin's not happy with me, I can tell, because normally he straightens out my no, newspapers no, no, as no, we no, go no, along. No. And today, well, I, I and today you're I'm, not going anywhere near, are you? We're more in an enclosed space, you see. So I know, I'm I know, but I was, it would it be very it helpful because it's looking very... Would it, right? The table's looking very, oh, very I'll, messy. I'll, 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 Thank I'll, you. I'll sort it all <laughs> Thank you very much for playing mum. Back page of the sun while Martin gathers the papers. There's no more... Popper on his way um, if, if Mourinho stays and uh, David Hay wants £350,000 a week to stay um, and uh, Jurgen Klopp is leading the City Chase. Um, City Chase to be runners up in the Premier League. Let's talk about Liverpool now and uh, the form they're in. Another big win for them yesterday, more goals, a lot of goals at Anfield, four more for them. Um, but just how impressed are you with the way that they're playing? It's kind of, it's cavalier. Um, mm. But it's impressive at the same it's time. It's fantastic. Mm. It's fantastic. I mean, any other season, you know, other than other than yeah. the season that have got this Manchester City uh, team in it, everyone would have been talking about Liverpool for 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 a long time now. I mean, the, the amount of goals they're scoring and the way they're playing. I mean, I saw them um, in Porto the other week, and they were just they were just yes. superb. And some of the counter attacking, front to back, uh, back to front, is just the speed at which they move, um, and and what he's done to get. Um, the performances that he's getting out of Salah, the performances of Firmino, who is looking like a superb player at the moment, a really, really superb player. Um, and there's real, there's real potential there. I mean, I know everyone says about the defence, but Manchester City's defence is not the greatest. It, it, it's, it, it's, it, it's good, it's not the greatest. I mean, if you're scoring that amount of goals, it is possible you could... Um, win the league with less than a stellar defence. You don't necessarily need George Graham's Arsenal defence to win the league if, you, if you're going to score 100 goals in a season. He's, he's getting there with the defence, though, isn't he? You can see yeah, Robertson, is. everyone's talking about mm. Robertson's being probably their best left back in, in, in 30 years. Obviously, yeah. he needs to do it over a period of time. But he's a, he's a very intelligent footballer. He's obviously got the sort of stamina to get up and get back. So he's been a real plus because it's been almost their Achilles heel, centre-half, Virgil van Dijk coming in. I mean, not simply his defensive qualities, but the impact that he has on addressing. He's a very sort of striking individual in terms of the size mm -hmm. of the man. And his sort of personality, he's an intelligent individual. He'll sort of help bond. That. I still think they need a goalkeeper. I'm not particularly original saying that. Liverpool fans have been saying it for a while. I think if that gets addressed at some point, then they will go on and, and clear. But you see, the thing about Klopp, you know, there were some people doubting Klopp about a year ago. You just look at the personality of man. You know, with, with managers nowadays, it's about recruitment, it's about tactics, but it's also about that ability to inspire. And you can see Klopp's immediate engagement with the Liverpool fans. You can see his immediate engagement with the Liverpool players. They love him because he's such a... He's, I mean, you know, we've, we've interviewed him. He's a really interesting, fun character. You can have extraordinary sort of conversations with him about German music, about, obviously, football, and he's just a very interesting character that you automatically engage to. There are very few real stars in English football at the moment, and Klopp is a star. He's got that personality. Isn't it incredible that since Coutinho, Coutinho left, he's barely had a mention mm -hmm. uh, around Liverpool? Mm -hmm. He's gone, and Firmino seems to have risen to the challenge. I'm not saying he wasn't playing well before, but he's playing incredibly well. Yeah. Now. I just thought, maybe his Klopp's got into his ear, you've got to take on the mantle a bit more now. Mm. And he really has. Salah was doing what he was doing anyway. I have to say, when Salah signed for Liverpool, it was shrug your shoulders sort of stuff. When he came to Liverpool, mm. nobody was going, it's going to make all the difference. Well, Liverpool were looking at the fee and thinking, well, what? we saw it <laughs> Chelsea, it looked all right. Never really went. Absolutely. 
Klopp's done fantastically. I wonder with, if with that down Klopp Palace. knew that uh, although they protested about Coutinho and they could put mm. the fee up, they knew Barcelona wanted him. Deep down he thought, you know what? Even if I lose him, I think I've got a way mm. of working without him. But I'll drive the fee up, making out that absolutely no way on earth. He's recruited we well, him. hasn't he? I mean, you look at mm. Oxlade Chamberlain, who got Arsenal here today. I mean, the Ox has mm. clearly developed yeah. under him as well. You know, so he's, he's, he's People were talking about him as man of the match yesterday. In yeah, this, yeah but five, five years ago, we were in the American mm. R. He's scoring yeah. a brilliant goal in a friendly. Mm. It's, it's not like yeah. he didn't have that talent. He yeah. just lost just his way the, somewhere. But even the goalkeeper, I take Henry's point, and I, 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 you know, I don't disagree that you look at Liverpool's goalkeepers and, and uh, you know, the, the goalkeeping options, and you think, well, not exactly David De Gea, is it? And, mm. and, and, but at the same time, David De Gea wasn't David De Gea when he no, first wasn't. turned up at no. Manchester United, and everyone was. And the one thing you'd say, uh, uh, um, like Carius, is that he's improved. He's got. He's got better. If you had a criticism of of, of Mignolet, it's that he looks pretty much the same goalkeeper now uh, as he did when he joined Liverpool, and it, it's. it's, it's Carlos is getting better in the way that De Gea got better. You don't know where he will be in a couple of years' time. He he, he might be. He, he, he might try on. Mark yeah. makes a good point about De Gea there. If you remember in his first season, yeah. the, the tactic was just rattle him. He was good. Yeah. I remember watching a game at Stoke where they just Put it in the threw mixer. it all in the yeah. six-yard box. De Gea couldn't claim anything. But, but and the, we what, thought the, he dropped him, okay. they dropped an almighty ricket saying but we, we knew that David De Gea was, it had immense potential, didn't well, we? Well, yeah, but I we think didn't we think he was to going the, to be able to cope with the physicality no, of the Premier I, League. I, I, Every I team was throwing in there. He had a terrible he start. Couldn't take crosses and no, stuff like that. not at all. Uh, there was a lack of communication between him and his centre-halves. Mm. It was all over the place. But yeah. his management there, I mean, Ferguson and the subsequent yeah. managers, they have always believed implicitly in De Gea. Uh -huh. And Ferguson would say, you lot are wrong, but, he's going to come Klopp right. But believed in but, carriers. But, 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 but he's, he's not always played him. No, but then it's, it's as Martin says, he's a developing process. He, he talked to carry us up when he came, and he also talked pretty much you knew he was going to bring him back. Mm. You could tell he was going to bring him back. I just think he's improving. I'm, I don't know if he will get where you need to get to, to, to win a title, you know, because mm. I, I don't think too many teams with poor goalkeepers ever win the title. So I, I don't know if he gets where he needs to get. But he's he's moving on. Every time you see him, you think, oh, he, look, he looks. There's seven or eight better. fantastic goalkeepers in the world at the moment. Yeah. You know, yeah. Ter Stegen, Edison, individual De Gea, clearly number one. Um, Nora as well. I wouldn't put Carius anywhere near that bracket. Oh, God, oh, yeah. I'm not saying oh, yeah. this at the moment. Yeah, but there's but, some very but, good uh, young goalkeepers at the moment. Yeah. Go to Italy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just let's finish off this chat on, on Liverpool. Um, is there a temptation for Klopp in some? We wrote about Lewandowski um, yeah. wanting or flirting with a move um, to the Premier League. Mm. Is there a temptation for Klopp to try to sign a player that he worked with, of course, at Borussia yeah. Dortmund um, in, in the summer from Bayern? Amazingly, didn't score for Bayern Munich yesterday. It's the first time in months that he hasn't. Um, but he play, he's been playing without a main man, main man at Liverpool. They're all scoring up front. Yes, but he's got an up front three that, yes. that you but is don't the think Levin, you, you'll would be you, changing there, the way you play. Yeah, is the temptation you? there to tinker and say, oh, Lewandowski, is, he's some player? There is a huge temptation, but because I don't someone's think going to take, go for him, aren't they? Someone I don't think will they will. I don't think he'll take that temptation. I mean, Man United could look at him and think, you know what, he brought him in. That could really make a difference for us next season. Chelsea is a strange one because um, he, a 30 year old, they have this policy. I know they broke it with Giroud, but their idea is to bring, to go younger. So would they go for it? Somebody will bite, you're right. But it doesn't seem to be the right fit for Liverpool now, mm. does it? No, he's got. Why would you mess around, particularly with with the forwards? I, mm -hmm. I can see how you might think. But Man United you did it can more work, though, don't you think? Field. But but if you're buying, if you're buying him because you're worried that Manchester United are buying him, I mean. No, but for Man, for Man United, I think he'd be a great signing. But sorry, but you, yeah, but, sure. you, but are you writing off? Lukaku. Lukaku is on course no. to finish no, 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 with no, thirty to, goals. Man United used to have four. Four strikers sure. to pick from, so it, there's nothing wrong with having Lewandowski and Lukaku, is there? But that doesn't necessarily happen in the in the modern game. It's not like when Manchester United were well, playing we effectively four four two, and they had these four fantastic strikers, and they be, rotated. Then you, you often most clubs now play with one up. Yeah, but who's there? All right, Lukaku gets injured. Who's there one down the middle? He doesn't seem to well, trust. Play he doesn't or trust. Martial. Yeah, but he doesn't. He doesn't even put Rashford in the team. Let alone to, he doesn't seem to trust him as an out and out striker or Martial as an out and out striker. You do have to have two good. 
strikers anyway. You could play either of those two down the middle, and he, well, he has youth he on one occasion. Then? Well, because he's he's playing Lukaku. You could argue he's playing Lukaku too much, but Lukaku is that type of player. Well, that Wenger he wants spent up fifty there. odd million on Lacazette, and then went out and bought Aubameyang. Didn't he? Yeah. So he, he decided maybe that's not working for me, so I'd better have another striker. So maybe Mourinho will think the same but way. But who's doing the recruiting at Arsenal? What's that got to do with it? Well, I'm just saying, as a club, as, as a club, they might think, that's let's go and get Lewandowski. <laughs> what does that say? Sorry, what does that say? Yeah, 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 yeah. I think he's a fantastic <laughs> player, but I just don't think Lukaku Would you like to see Lewandowski in the Premier League? I'd love to see him in the Premier League. Well, where, do you want, where do you think you should well, be? Well, I just go don't necessarily see that Manchester United would, would, would want him when they're so committed to Lukaku. Where do you think he should go? Where, if, do you if think he's Lukaku's coming to the having League? a bad season? Yeah, I think he's having an OK season, but not as, not as good as it might have been. Given the tactical setup of Manchester United, where he's often isolated, which we saw the other I just, night. I just said, if then I actually think he's coming, coming to the Premier season. League and you're a manager, uh, <laughs> who would, would you go for? Martin, Martin's starting to read the rugby. Well, I would. I, no, that's a point. Would you go for him? I, I, I would go for him, but I don't see why Manchester United necessarily need him at the moment. So who would go for him, do you think? He's available. Say he's come to the Premier League, say he's available. Put your hat in the ring. Well, we immediately like. assume that everyone wants to come to the Premier League. I think Lewandowski does. I think it's what he you wants do? to try, yeah, definitely. He's not, he's not renegotiating at Bayern. Martin, any thoughts on... No, I think no, he'd be leaving. Martin's got no <laughs> thoughs on Levin. Do you want to talk... Um, and the, cur the, the curling's at the back. <laughs> no, I was just reading the curling. Curl Me and Mark got beat. About this. We've got to beat. Yeah, we've got to end to end, yeah. We've got to beat. Uh, <laughs> the last one, we? We Yeah, we lost. Yeah, Shall we talk... Shall we? Part yeah. West Brom? Sorry. Below par. Um, front page of the, uh, the Stars uh, goals or results pull out uh, this morning. Um, after another defeat for, for West Brom. Is it just one of those... Managerial changes, just not the right man, not the right fit. Do we look at it that way? Or he's, he says he's tried everything, and now he says he's got a bag packed. You've always got a bag packed as a manager. You feared for, you feared for Alan Pardew. The, the, where, when, when he goes into clubs, he's, he's not a Sam Allardyce guy or David Moyes guy, but the, we've got this reputation of they get it organised, they get it sorted, and they, they, you know, and you start nicking results and you start keeping it tight. Pardew has always been a, a, an impact manager. You get a bounce. You get, you know, he takes over and you know he gets everyone mm. going, and, and and you know you you sort of bounce on on this confidence. So what and well, the minute that that hadn't happened at West Brom after about four games, five games, six games, you're thinking, well, this is he. He wasn't the same. If they thought they were getting a fireman, if they thought they were getting one of these English managers that will get you out of jail, that's not actually not Alan Pardew. He's, he's, he's quite cavalier in the way he plays, mm. really. He's, he's, he's not a guy that... Think of the Liverpool game in the Africa's yeah, bounce. Yeah, talking about was in the, the FA Cup. Liverpool game, and then, it, then they couldn't sustain it. This run at, uh, at West Brom, by the way, has been going on for the best part of a year now. I mean, if you look at the back end of last season, it's not just this season that's gone wonky. They've been they've been in, in steady decline for about a year now, if you look at um, towards the end of mm. last season as well. They, they, their results were at best inconsistent. Um, so he's in trouble. And you, mm. can, you can see him going because you've, you've got a, a Chinese consortium um, that runs the club who, you know, they're, they're not involved in... Uh, English football to uh, make as much money as they can out of the championship. I can guarantee that. Yeah. Um, Chris so, going to lose a fortune, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, it's interesting listening to, to the West Brom fans because they've not necessarily turned on Pardew. No. I think they were, you know, the issues. I think there's an understanding he was unfortunate with the uh, with with a Sturridge injury. There's clearly a lot of sort of on this institutional turmoil within the club with with two mm. of the main sort of executives and chairman leaving. Um, but actually, was it, by all accounts, I wasn't at the game yesterday, but they were actually having a go at the players because they yeah. saw the player in discipline. You can then criticise Pardew, should he have taken the players away to, uh, to, to, to Barcelona? Shouldn't they have stayed at home and focused on it? I even think the timing of the flight coming back was actually too short a period before the uh, before a big game at the weekend. But actually, I've got some sympathy for uh, for, for, for Pardew. Mm -hmm. I understand the sort of wrong fit for, for for the job, but clearly the problems in that. You know, you've got an imbalanced squad. You've got a lack of professionalism in, in in certain players who clearly let him and the and, and the fans down at the uh, uh, out in Barcelona. So uh, <coughs> look, it, you can't nail this all on Pardew. Seven Premier League wins in. In 49, yeah. it is, Sean. Uh, one win in 13 as the West Brom manager in the, in the Premier League. They were 17th when he took over. They're 20th now, of course. Um, could you have predicted this? Um, I. We've talked off air, and we actually quite like Alan Pardew. Mm -hmm. He's a very engaging character. Yeah, he, that's he's, all well and good. Very, we all no, like Alan I'm just, Pardew. No, that's I'm all not, very nice. I'm just saying he's quite an engaging... <laughs> 
Scott character, and he talks quite well about he talks well about football. He likes to debate it. He does have a good football knowledge. And um, I actually, when you when he went into West Brom, I thought, well, West Brom's not really doesn't look like a squad that should be bottom of the table. Therefore, some squads you go in, you think mm -hmm. they haven't got enough. It looked like they possibly did have enough. Mm. Um, but you would like it when he went in when he went into Newcastle, for instance. He wasn't a popular appointment when he started. I don't think there was the same animosity at West Brom to Paul no. as when he went into Newcastle. I mean, it went wrong at Newcastle, though. Whoa! Hit him so hard. So this one's a little bit different. It's like Martin says, this, the animosity isn't really against him. It's against the whole organisation of the club. And he's almost caught in the crossfire. He talks very honestly, doesn't he? About, yeah. uh, no, I could be on my way, lads. Yeah. I, I thought it was interesting the way he stressed We'd won three games in, was it 37, he said, so he was almost... He took it back to the previous took, era. He took it back he? to yeah. the previous era. To, but he doesn't sound like a man who thinks, well, if we go down, I'll be the one to help bring them back up. He's not talking in that way at no, all. No, I think no, sure. he knows what okay. he was there for. Mm. Yeah. Um, well, if he does survive, they've got a tough game next week because it's at Vicarage Road. It's against Watford, of course, who beat um, Everton last night at uh, home. OK, next up, controversial subject. This one, Martin's written about it this week. What makes a real football fan? We'll tell you next.
Welcome back. We're at Wembley Stadium, a live special edition of the Sunday Supplement. This morning before the Carabao Cup final is, of course, Arsenal against Manchester City. Later on this afternoon, that game is live here on Sky. 4.30 kickoff. Uh, you might have noticed the Carabao Cup has disappeared. Um, but in honour and tribute to the Sunday Supplement, we've got the... Um, We've got the muffin trophy. Yeah. Um, that's in honour of the person who eats the yeah. most muffins. Not during the course, not during yeah. the course of this programme, uh, before we insinuate over it, but over the season. Um, to be fair, who would way, win? The way the Football League have run the draw, to be fair, you could, <laughs> someone could get presented with that at about half past six to nine. Oh, you never know. You never know. I'd like to take over with me anyway. First bit of silverware of the season, the, uh, the Sunday Supper muffin. Um, let's get into um, real football fans, Martin, because you brought it up in your column on Friday, didn't you? Mm -hmm. This is yeah. the, the real West Ham fans action group. Um, that was the their... start of it, yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. What, um, what, what was the genesis of the, I of the uh, idea? The, the idea was just seeing the word real in front of your real West yeah. Ham fans. Um, because it, it, it seems to be a lot of sort of tyranny about the word real at the moment. Oh, you've got to be real. You're real. And, it, and it just struck me, well, the real West Ham fans have got a legitimate point of view. I mean, there's not, nothing, nothing to do with that. This real West Ham fans action group. They're marching. They're not happy with the ball. They're not happy with the stadium. Okay, that, that's that's great. But that's not every West Ham fan. And it seemed that by calling a, a fans action group the real West Ham fans, it, 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 as if as if anyone who doesn't share that opinion is somehow not a real West Ham fan. And I just looked at that and thought, well, there's going to be people going to the Olympic Stadium who. I don't want to march against the stadium or accept the reasons for moving to the stadium. Um, and if they're buying their ticket and they're paying their money and they're going to the game, same as everybody else, well, they're no less real than, than the fans who are, who, who are taking action. In the, and I just made the point that there will be there'll be some Newcastle fans. I'm not saying it's a massive amount of Newcastle fans, but actually thought that Mike Ashley has, has kept the club solvent and as long mm. as they stay in the Premier League... I can't, League. I can't no, imagine there are many. No, I'm not many saying there's many, but it doesn't <laughs> mean... If you, if you go, if yeah. you go and you pay your money, there will be some Manchester City fans that actually liked it the old way. They actually liked it right. when they stood for something different to Manchester United, when they weren't part of the Big Six, when they weren't part of the elite. And it didn't matter to them that they didn't win the league. And it didn't matter to them that, you know, Pep Guardiola wasn't the manager. They liked old Manchester City as standing for something different mm -hmm. to Manchester United. Now, there's not going to be a load of Manchester City fans like that. But if they're going and they're paying their money and, and they're supporting the club as they do, it doesn't make them any less real. And it just, it just strikes me that there is a... This idea that, every, you know, this, this people claiming authenticity as if it invalidates the, the view of the person next to them, I don't think is right. It's the 52-48. You know, 48 mm -hmm. percent would be, be a landslide in most general elections, but we are now being told, being talked to as if as if 52 percent of the country, as if 48 percent of the country's views don't matter. This is not the real Britain. Mm -hmm. The real Britain is the 52 percent. Well, 48 percent is a lot of people. Their views are no less real. They, they haven't actually lost their right to be listened to. But, 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 but we're not straying into sort of Monty Python, Life of Brian, you know, the, 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 the wheel, the people's front of well, that's Judea it, and that's all what that. I mean, that's no, what no, it but, is. But I do, but no, I agree with you, I agree with you in terms of the, the word real, um, but I don't think you can, um, you know, they've got every right to protest. I didn't say that. That's 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 in fact, I actually started by saying it's a legitimate point of view exactly. and they've got every exactly. right to protest. So your, your, your issue is with the word the real. The word real. Yeah, the word absolutely. real just in life. Real women. Real women are always like size 14 or whatever. Well, what if I ever spot you writing the real deal in one of your intros, Martin, no, I would Real Madrid. It. Real <laughs> Madrid, yeah. Real Man U fans <laughs> had to wear green and gold, didn't they, when the Glazers first came uh, in? Yeah, all the time. Bex did. And, Remember? And, Famously. Yeah, absolutely. And they get carried away on the bandwagon. Real Newcastle fans had to be part of sackpardew.com, as we were talking before. And if you weren't part of sackpardew.com, well, you, you <laughs> what, what business fan. were you doing in yeah. the, at the ground, frankly? So I take Martin's point completely. But it's, it's life in general, isn't it? There, there are no longer two points of view on a particular subject. You have to go with the majority. OK, it's, well, I, I wrote a little bit about... Yeah, society. I, how do we feel? I wrote a little bit about this um, on Friday in turn, and it wasn't... It wasn't too far removed from what you're talking about, no. I don't think, Martin. Is Rochdale supporters? Mm. We were there. Henry mm. was there last weekend at Spotland. Eight thousand for the game against Tottenham. Okay, probably two thousand Tottenham fans were there. When they played MK Dons on Wednesday night, a relegation battle, the attendance is down to two thousand three hundred for the home game. Three days later, seventy-two hours on. 
But on Wednesday night here at Wembley, yeah. they'll have thousands and thousands of supporters here. How do we feel about the distinction between, oh, it's an FA, big FA Cup tie against Tottenham, 8,000 are there. Oh, it's MK Dons on Wednesday night. Well, we don't need to go to that because we're coming to Wembley on the following Wednesday. Well, I think it's partly human nature. And what you have to do with that is just hope that some of them so fall in love with either the football experience, obviously it's more dramatic here than at than Spotland, uh, in terms of the, the setting, or the ones who actually went to Spotland last week were just so thrilled by an incredible occasion, like when we went to Yeovil early in the season. And that is what one of the, what the cup does so brilliantly. Actually, it does entice a few people to fall in love with the game. Some people who say, well, I'm, I, can't, I can't go every week, but actually I'm just going to go to this game, and they love it so much that they, they go back. So I, I take your point about are they cherry-picking their games, but if a few of them stay on, then that's fantastic. They are less real, though, aren't they, Henry? They are less real. The ones who turned up for the Glory Cup tie are less real than the ones who yeah. went to the MK Dons game. I think in that case, yeah. If remember, you went to the MK Dons game, yeah, you should be given free coach journey, free yeah, travel, absolutely. free you're training. A, you're a a, it's a, and a cheeseburger, a whatever it is. You are, you are a proper fan, aren't you? I always remember bumping into a proper in fan. The, I think it was 97, 98, but bumping into a guy who had a Newcastle United shirt on and we were in a shop and I just was talking to him about uh, where he was from. He said, um, Cornwall. I went, oh, so was your mum, was your dad a Newcastle fan? No, no, just like the way they play. I didn't consider him a real fan. Didn't no. like that. No, no. Uh, would you so agree? Is, would well, you agree that's yeah, not a real I mean, fan? Yeah, yeah I, 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 look, it's, it's an interesting thing because when I wrote that, um, and I made the distinction about if you, if you pay your money and you go, you're, you know, you're a real fan. You're, you're no, your view is no less real than anyone else's view. Even if you are in the minority, you, you, you are still a real fan. A lot of people sort of coming back to you and saying, well, I'd love to go to football. I can't afford to go to football. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but my passion for my club is, is very real. And it's an interesting one, isn't it? Because football is very, very expensive now. And, and you, you know, words like real do risk divorcing huge sections of, mm -hmm. of, of society um, from football. Well, you're, you're not real because you don't go. Well, maybe you can't afford to go. Um, it's, it's but also, we live in society. If you're, if you're, say you're a Man United fan in Kathmandu, what? Well, well, no, we're sorry, you're going to see them on the telly, though. You're not going to see them on the telly, though. Catman do thistle, I think you'll find. Oh, um, <laughs> they show up and come in, and they You're probably going to see them on the telly, though, but the chances of you seeing Rochdale and Kay Dons on, on the telly aren't high for the one who stays yeah. at home. Therefore, you got to be at the game. But leave aside yeah, the Catman do element. In, in, <laughs> in, this, in, in this country, there is far more fluidity of work. People are not necessarily working where they grew up, where their local team is. So why shouldn't? I mean, I've been on the trains um, up from Peterborough to Newcastle. It is heaving with Newcastle United fans going who, back living to the game. London, who are going back to the game. So Real that's fans. that's that's fantastic. Real fans. Real fans, but sorry, not every, not all of them were season ticket holders. No. No. So why should we necessarily look down it's on? Almost fifty-two thousand. Yeah. Oh, can, 52. can I just say the fans yes. I like most, away fans. You love all fans. And I don't know, particularly, particularly, particularly away fans. fans particularly away fans. <laughs> I think when you go to a Manchester United, when Manchester United mm -hmm. are playing away, you appreciate the, the, the size of the club. Yep. Mm. Okay. In midweek. Uh, I always think with England fans, because England fans yeah. get treated horrendously at a lot of places they go to, and you look at it sometimes and you think, why is there in this for you, mate? I mean, if you're a sensible fellow, uh, you know, I'm not talking about you want to have a fight with a load of Russian geezers, but um, if you're a sensible person, you look at it and think, what is there in this for you? But they don't but trouble they, with their they clubs. Love it. In yeah, yeah, you, you look at yeah, like their Halifax. Yeah. Oh, their no, people, I see uh, that. Uh, but I do look at it sometimes and think, guys, I, I can't, you know, I, I really, I think, I think they're fantastic. Don't, don't, don't they? underestimate, it's a great trip for some of them in terms of the nights. Henry's been on some of those trips. On some of the, the nights yeah. out. Well, okay. <laughs> we, we had, we've had. We talk about the nights out during yeah. the break that Sean Cusses and Henry Winter have had with the England fans. OK, um, from proper fans uh, to proper clubs, we're going to talk about Palace Tottenham and we'll come back to the uh, Carabao Cup final as well here at Wembley. It's Arsenal against Manchester. City later on this afternoon. Do you need some extra time, mate? Selco, sponsoring Sky Sports Sunday Supplement.
final. Preparations underway at uh, Wembley Stadium, head of the Carabao Cup final between Arsenal and Manchester City uh, this afternoon. The lawnmowers are out. Um, you wouldn't want to, you want to make a mistake with these two managers, would you? Guardiola and Ben. What, what, what are you like with the lawnmower? Flying lawnmower. Martin. I think that's my. Pretty guard. handy. I think that's my garden. Sean's got Astro. <laughs> he, you got rid of the grass, didn't Not you? Well, half and half and half, half and half. Bit of Astro. Yeah. Rumour has it, Henry, your garden's bigger than the one at Wembley Stadium. Absolutely. I've been to Henry's oh, garden. Been, oh, been. Much bigger than that. Yes. I can much only. Bigger. Bigger. We can and the tennis ball <laughs> and the. Oh, we got, honestly, we got, yeah. we got more the boating moles. lake at the bottom. We got more moles. Yeah. Unbelievable. That's so tickets for visitors. It's a wonder I've never been invited to the summer garden summer garden party at Lord Winters. I'm asking Martin to open it. Let's talk. Um, reasonable rates. Let's talk a bit of Palace. <laughs> <laughs> Good let's coffee. <laughs> yeah, yeah. At least you get a cup of coffee. Can we? Let's talk to Palace. Real fans. Um, Sean, if I may, um, Pochettino talk about Toby Adderfield on uh, on Friday and his future. Says that he's not the man um, sorting it out. Um, who is and does he stay? Could do they find a way to keep him? I'm, I'm not sure anymore that Pochettino's obsessed with him like Spurs fans are. Every time. A, a, a Spurs top crops. Alderweireld seems to be the key issue mm -hmm. at Tottenham, and I think Pochettino's trying to move on from that and trying to make out that this team is bigger than, well, one player. I know Kane is the player, but bigger than whether Alderweireld stays or goes. Tottenham almost have to move on to be seen as a bigger club. I accept he's been a, a good player for them, and that uh, when he's injured, Tottenham fans panic. But there is a there is a Tottenham fans in our office going. Oh, Got to talk about Alderweireld. We're worried about Alderweireld. Get away from the obsession. And Pochettino is trying to get away from it. I don't think they panic. Like, is it, there's a slight mm -hmm. debate whether you're playing a, a, a two or a three. Obviously, if you're playing a three, you, you, you need him even more. But look, he is an outstanding centre half. I know there've been one or two injury things. He's taken a time to come back. There's obviously a contract standoff. But with Spurs's direction of travel being so positive yeah. in terms of everything, you want to keep talent like that. Mm. Do you not think? Uh, as well, uh, it's more important than, than keeping him at Spurs. It's that they don't continue solving the problems of other football clubs, solving the problems of, of clubs that are rivals to Tottenham now. Because Tottenham aren't the Martin Joel era, fifth place every single season. They're, they're in that Champions League mix. They've got a, they've got a puncher's chance in the Champions mm -hmm. League. They've played extraordinarily well against Juventus. They they they. they they played Real Madrid off the park here. Now, Toby Alderweireld, we know, is a, is, a, is a very, very good centre-half and one of the best centre-halves in the Premier League. And if he leaves, and if he goes to Manchester United, or mm. if he goes to Liverpool, where we're all talking about they could do with you know one more or whatever shot up at the back, or if he goes to Manchester City, whether that makes Tottenham weaker or not is almost irrelevant. It makes the other team stronger. Why would you make Manchester United stronger? Why would you make City any stronger? They've already made City stronger than they were. Carl Walker, selling Carl Walker, and I, I, and I think Trippier is as good a right back as there is in the, in the Premier League, and I think he's the best English crosser of the mm. ball I've seen since David Beckham. But selling Carl Walker to Manchester City solved Pep Guardiola's problem because what he wanted yeah. was two overlapping fullbacks so that Raheem Sterling and those guys come in and they join up with the front and that makes his system work and Tottenham allowed his system to work. So what happens if you sell him abroad? If you sell him abroad that's slightly different unless you're selling him to a team that's going to knock you out of the Champions League next Which season. the chances are he will want to go to one of those teams. Yeah, so so keep him. But don't you think Pochettino is trying to get away from obsessions about individual players though? He wants Tottenham to be seen as, as bigger than that. I understand Harry Kane is like a world top. Yeah, yes. It's a general principle. No, I get that. And solving but he doesn't want problems. It. Whenever you bring up individual players with Pochettino, he prefers to focus on the project, if you like, yeah. the whole. But all managers do. But you I, think know what I mean, just, no yeah. manager wants to just keep talking about the same player. But the, but the main principle here is Daniel Levy's wage structure, and yeah. that has got to be addressed when they go into the stadium. Yeah. Yeah, it has. Be sure. I just it, it was always the way. All those years when they couldn't break into the top four, but they're selling Berbatov to Manchester United, mm -hmm. and they're selling Carrick to Manchester United. They I think well, they've got to find you know, a way to move that's on. That's why yeah. you can't break into the top four because you keep mm -hmm. solving Manchester United's problems. Yeah. Okay. First up, of course, today on Sky it uh, is Palace against Tottenham. But um, later on, 4:30 this afternoon, it's uh, kick-off here is Man City uh, playing Arsenal. Guys, just a quick prediction from you guys on the result today. Oh, then I'll think about it. A quick prediction. Do you know what? The, the, the pressure is the so much on fine. Arsenal. 
I, could, I still think City will shade it. Could it be the City blip? I'm going for Arsenal. Okay. Go for us. I'll go for City. You'll go for City. OK. Good stuff, guys. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. Martin, Henry and Sean, enjoy the game a little bit later on this afternoon. OK. It's all on Sky. It's uh, Palace against Tottenham, 11.30. Man United, Chelsea, that's from 2. Arsenal against Man City from 3.30, 4.30 kickoff. Goals on Sunday's next. Uh, William Gallas and Sylvain Distan. Thanks for your time. We'll see you next week at 9.30. Bye for now. Sky Sports Football. Feel it all.